Hello everybody and welcome back to Explorers at Home. It's so nice to see lots of familiar names already. Welcome back. It's so nice. I can see Michael is back. Welcome John and Asha. Welcome Elliot. Welcome Elska. Elska is a new name. Welcome to new people too. I love that we've got so many new names already actually. Alex, Amy and Abigail, I recognise you guys. Welcome, welcome. Loads of people pouring in. So if you're new or if you've come back again, then just settle in, get comfortable. We'll do a proper introduction once everybody's in. People are still coming in. I can see the numbers going up. Let's see. Hello, Caris. Hello, Archer. Hello. Hello, Eva. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Riley, Tracy, Zach. Hello, everybody. Keep coming. We're just letting lots of people come in. Hello, I see some people have found the chat already. Welcome, welcome. Amazing. Someone's Hello. found emojis. <laughs> I know, very impressive. Hello, Zach. Hiya. Perfect. Hello. Hello, Beatrix. It's great to have you back as well. Hello, Alice, Eva, Joanne. Lots of people. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Elska. I see you in the chat now. Lovely. All right, we'll let everybody come in. A couple more people still coming. And once we're all comfortable and the numbers have settled down, then we will get started. It's good to there, be back. Isn't it? It's just such a nice thing. We've missed you all, all of you beautiful people who come regularly. And because we've had a bit of an extra push telling people about Explorers at Home, we've got more new people than usual as well, which is really exciting. So welcome if you're new and you haven't been before. We will get started in just a minute. We've got a couple more people coming. Hello, hello. And if you have to leave later on before we finish, don't worry, it's all being recorded and you can watch it back anytime on our website. And if you've missed any of our previous sessions and this is your first one, then you can watch all our old sessions on there too, because they're all on ready for free. Hello, Iona, welcome, welcome. I'll try and remember, Iona, that you come up on our screens as a Joanne. So if I call you Joanne, I'm sorry. <laughs> hello, everybody. Hello, hello. All right, then. I think, are we ready to start, Lizzie? Oh, we should get going. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Over to you, Lizzie. OK, well, welcome to Explorers at Home. Woohoo! Uh, my name is Lizzie, and this is somewhere. I'm Josie. I'm over here for me, but I don't know if you're over there for you. I don't know. <laughs> um, this is our monthly club, our little wildlife club, um, where we have different themes each time, which is amazing. We've been going since January. Um, and they're, like Josie said, all online. Um, I don't know if we have said that already, but they are online if you want to catch up. There are some pretty cool sessions we've already done if you haven't seen them. But the last one we had, was before the summer holidays so please let us know if you found any cool wildlife or had some wildlife adventures um put them in the chat we love hearing your stories please do share but if we're there because we've seen lots of new names we're going to let Josie quickly describe how you can get involved and interact with us throughout the session perfect thanks lizzie so well if you know how to use the chat already tell us in there what you've been up to all summer and if you're new let me explain so this is explorers at home it is all live it's online we are in different places lizzie and myself but we're both here with you today now we can't see you and we can't hear you but we can still interact we have the chat function so if you look at the bottom of your screen there should be a little speech bubble symbol tap that or click it and it should pop up with a window where you can type some messages to us you can't see each other's messages but you can send them to us and we can hopefully read them out or do whatever you want to do if you've got questions ask us questions um, it can get very busy in the chat with so many people sending us messages all at once so sorry if we miss your messages but we still get to read them all later we don't miss them completely we'll do our best to answer questions um, and it just yeah it might take us a little bit of time sometimes this is all being recorded as i mentioned and it will be made public later but again you don't need to worry because you're not on the screens or anything like that and we will also be playing some games later which will involve polls this is where questions pop up on the screen and you can tap and select your answer but i'll explain that in more detail when we come to it later on 
All right, I think that's all I need to say for now, Lizzie. So can I pass back to you to introduce our beginning of our session and our theme, because we have a theme every single month and this month is a very special one indeed. So tell us all about it, Lizzie. Well, this week's, uh, this month's theme is rivers because it is World Rivers Day this Sunday. So this Sunday that's just about to um, arrive is World Rivers Day. So loads of countries around the world celebrate their rivers and look at how they can help them. And we thought, what a brilliant session that will be. So our session is all on rivers. And what we want to know is um, a poll will come up, like Josie mentioned, and it says, who of you lives near a river because we have loads of waterways throughout Surrey and the UK but do you think you live near a river so we want to know hopefully it will come up on your screen here we go <laughs> so that poll should pop up for you now if it fills the screen and gets in the way you can move it out of the way as you need to just drag it around if you want and once you've picked your answer by tapping it, make sure you click submit at the bottom or it doesn't come through to us. We can see how many of you have voted and how far through we are. And then once it gets to near, most people have voted and everybody's had a chance, we'll end it and we can share the results. If you're watching this back on the recording, the polls will won't appear for you but don't worry because you can still play along and just like Lizzie did she'll always read out the answers so it'll say yes I live near a river I'm not sure if there's any rivers near me or no there's no rivers near my home and in the game we'll always read out all those answers for you so you can still play along all right we've got nearly everybody in fact everyone has voted you're so speedy so that makes it really easy for us let's see those results all right Lizzie this is what they said okay so We've got quite a few that said that you do live near a river. Some of you aren't sure. And there's a few that don't think there's any rivers near your home as well. So it's really interesting for us to know. And we might show you a map in a second and maybe your opinion might change. You never know. So, <laughs> all right then. I, thanks for sharing that with us guys. We appreciate that. So I'm gonna share my screen now and just replying to a message. Um, <laughs> Leave that to <laughs> me. Stop chatting to people. You've got more important things to do. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to share my screen now. Please let us know if you can't see it um, and we can try and help you out. So hopefully that's come up for you. And I am just going to make it a bit bigger. There we go. So like I said, our theme is rivers. And I mentioned a map. Now this is Surrey. We know some of you might not be in Surrey, so bear with us, but this is where we are. This is where our Wildlife Trust, who we work for, the Surrey Wildlife Trust, works. And we've got lots of nature reserves here, but can you see those blue lines? Those blue lines are waterways, so things like rivers and streams. And maybe you can see where you live. So let us know if you can see a river near where you live. You don't have to say where you live at all, just say if you can see one or not. But what we have in Surrey are two catchment areas. And a catchment area is where, now Josie, correct me if I'm wrong, it's mm -hmm. where rainfall falls and it travels, and that's where it goes into the rivers and streams, the waterways in that area. Is that how, how I should explain? Yeah, so basically a catchment is like a whole area where if the rain lands in that area, it all ends up in the same river. So rain that lands here goes into this river, rain that lands here goes into this river so they're two separate catchments and there's two main ones of those in Surrey I think Liz is going to show you now. Yes so we have the way catchment on the left there in the yellow and the mole catchment so if anyone has been to Nowood before the Nowood is near Leatherhead where it says Leatherhead there so it's in the mole catchment can you see if you might be in either of those catchments at all? Mm -hmm. Amazing, but that's Teresa and Mia, so they can see a river near them, which is nice. Awesome, great job! And this is just to show you that there is so many waterways in Surrey, and it's not just Surrey. This is everywhere, even in London, with the River Thames, which you guys probably might have heard of. So there's so many rivers and streams and other waterways that we we will find out a bit later on might have an effect on. But I always love to see it's so interesting they look like roads don't they the rivers they're incredible they do absolutely amazing it looks almost like veins on a leaf all spreading everywhere really pretty yes 
Okay, so put in the chat if you do um, think of a river near you or a stream near you, but we're going to keep moving because one of my favourite things about these sessions is the games we get to Same play. time! Yes, oh, yes. yes. Are you ready for a game, everybody? I think we might be. So today's game is called River Roamers, and this game is all about the signs of wildlife we might see along a river. And it's not just along rivers, you might see some of these. They're things that you might spot throughout the UK. So not just where rivers are, might be on farmland and all sorts. But the signs that we're looking at are for creatures that specifically live near rivers or water bodies. So for this game, polls will come up. So remember, just click on the answer that you want. But to start with, imagine you're walking home from school and you have to walk along a river. So, and you see a big white feather floating in the water, just like the one on the screen there. Who do you think this feather belongs to? Is it A, a swan, B, a barn owl, or C, a mandarin duck? So a poll will come up for you now and you can choose either A, B or C. So A is the swan, B is the barn owl, and C is the mandarin duck. But remember, this is a really big white feather. So that might be a bit of a clue for you. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that <laughs> poll's appeared. I can see some votes coming in already and loads of lovely things coming into the chat. I can see that some people say they live near the River Mole, lots of people near the River Mole and some people near the Thames, which also comes through Surrey. And did you know the River Mole and the River, which was the other one? Oh, the Way, Way. that's what's near where I live. And these two both are tributaries for the Thames. And that means that they both flow into the Thames and feed that bigger river that eventually heads out to sea. Nearly everybody's voted now. So if you haven't voted yet, last chance. If you're not sure, just have a guess. That's the fun of it. So you don't need to know the answer. It's only a game. If you knew all the answers, it'd be kind of boring, I think. Mm -hmm. We're nearly done. Shall we see what we think then? Let's see what everybody voted for, Lizzie. It's pretty <laughs> unanimous. <laughs> it is. Everyone has said swan. So shall we see if you guys are on the right lines? Yeah, nice work. <laughs> <laughs> we do like to make some a bit easier than others, and there might be some more trickier ones for those of you that found that maybe a bit too easy today. So don't you worry. But you're right, that was a swan's feather. You can they can be seen floating along rivers, in lakes, in ponds. Maybe if you go and feed the ducks occasionally, you'll see some swans there too. But this is our meat swan. They are here all year round and they're the biggest swans we get. They're pretty beautiful, aren't they? And I love that orange beak. It's just so pretty compared to the white feathers. Yeah, Gorgeous. I love them. They've got a big, lovely, orangey red beak, like a carrot. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I remember them anyway. <laughs> They're like the snowmen of the bird world. Okay. So <laughs> they are. They are. Big, big long neck snowman. That'd be quite hard snowman to make, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would. Challenge for next snow day. Okay. So... As you continue walking along the river, you notice that along the riverbank, which is the sides of the river, that there's a hole in there and someone or something has cut the grass leading into it to make an entrance. Whose home do you think this is? Is it a rat, a water vole or an otter? So A for rat, B for water vole or C for otter? Who's made this hole? And a bit of a clue for you. It's about the size of a tennis ball. So about that big, not all big right. at all. Let's get this poll going for you all then. I think it should pop up now. Now, some people have said it hasn't been popping up for them. If you're on a tablet or a phone, it might show up as a different option at the top that you click away from the pictures and you go to the poll screen instead. And it'll be the whole screen until you're finished with the poll. So test that out. If you're on a phone or a tablet, I don't have a good example, but it should be like you click here for the pictures and the presentation, or you click here and it changes to the poll. So hopefully that works. And if it doesn't, like I said, don't worry, because all the poll says is, is it A, B or C? And you can do that for yourselves without the poll anyway. So if it's not working, don't worry, you can still play along. Now, nearly everybody's voted already. So I think let's see what happens. 
Oh, okay. So majority for B, the waterfowl, a few for A, the rat. And no one went for the otter, well, obviously. Okay, so shall we see what the answer is? Who has made that gorgeous little home? It is our waterfowl. Lovingly eating some vegetation there. Aren't they gorgeous? And we have them in Surrey, which is pretty cool. But these guys are really, mm, shall I say, afraid of us. So they, the sign of seeing a waterfall is you just hear a plop as they've gone into water and swum away. They're really scared of us. But if you do want to see these at all, the best technique is to be stealthy. So to be quiet and to have light footsteps as you're walking along the river Look and you might us. see one of these. <laughs> I can't resist doing an impression of a water bowl. And you see them sitting with their little hands like this, eating things. Oh, they're beautiful. Really pretty. Very special animals. They're yeah, very I've... fussy too. They only have the best rivers. So if we don't keep our rivers very happy and healthy, then we won't have water bowls. We've got to be really, really careful for them. Oh my gosh. Well, hopefully we all get to see one in our lives. That'll be cool. I haven't seen one yet. It's my mission this mm -hmm. year, hopefully. <laughs> So, as we continue our walk along a beautiful river, a bright flash flies by and makes a noise. And the noise is this. Now listen up for the high pitch squeak. So if you can't hear us very well, turn up the volume a little bit. Here we go. Lizzie, I think you might have forgotten to share sound when you shared your presentation. <laughs> I was kind of waiting for that. I thought I, I would put money on this today because we got ready in a bit of a rush, if you can't tell. So Lizzie, reshare your presentation for us. Bear with me. <laughs> and then we'll try again. <laughs> I suddenly thought, hmm, I think we didn't test this today. Normally we test it. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. This it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be Explorers at Home without a little bit of chaos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. listening up now, everyone. We can do this. <laughs> Here we go. Perfect. I'm going to play it again. So that high pitch squeak. Have a listen. Who do you think's made this squeaking noise as they've flown by along the river? Is it A, a kingfisher? B, a great crested grebe. Look at that fishing mouth. Or C, a mallard duck. Mm -hmm. Great you crested grebes always look like dragons to me. You know, like traditional Chinese dragons. They've got that long neck and a big crest. Like, rah, they look amazing. <laughs> They're awesome. And they just dive underwater as well and suddenly pop up somewhere else. They're amazing. I'll play that sound one more time for you guys. Here we go. Who do you think it is? And then the pole will come up. Okay, Josie, put the pole up. Let's see All what right. they think. Here we go, team. Get voting. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Lizzie, it's 20 past. We need to whiz through this game. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Folks are coming in. Oh, Pouring there's no in. doubt in what they think it is. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. It's nearly <laughs> unanimous. Make your decisions. Last two seconds. Two. One. And let's see what you did. Here it is. So most of you guys said A for Kingfisher and one or two of you said B for Great Crested Green. Okay, the answer is our Kingfishers. Mm -hmm. These guys are incredible. They're my favorite birds to see along the riverway, uh, the riverway or any riverway. And mm -hmm. they are <laughs> amazing. You normally just hear them, that squeaking sound and a bright blue flash as they fly by. Or they're seen perching like these guys on a branch, looking at the water, looking for fish to eat. They're beautiful. So nice yeah, work on in, in the middle of Woking, I saw one on the canal there once, Lizzie. So they don't, you don't have to go out to the wild to see these beautiful things sometimes. They are all over rivers, all across Surrey. We're really lucky. Amazing. That's good to know, because they are beautiful, beautiful creatures. Okay, there's a footprint in the mud and it's quite a big footprint, about 16 centimetres long, so about that big. Who do you think it belongs to? Is it A, a coot, 
be a moorhen or C, a grey heron. Have a look at all their feet, they're incredible. So the poll will come up for you now and select the answer that you want. There we go, there's the poll for you. Lots of people in the chat say that they've seen one before of the kingfishers, so that's really nice. You don't forget seeing a kingfisher, they're beautiful. But this is a different bird, and just like Lizzie says, there's a clue in the picture for what it might be. It's a tricky one. Lots of, oh, we've got a nearly even split for our answers this time, don't we? Good, a bit more of a challenge for you guys. That's it what is. And okay. good job for giving it a go, even if you're not sure. Well done. And especially if you're with your brothers or sisters or any sort of sibling and you've had to decide on one that you might be arguing about too. So good mm -hmm. job on that. <laughs> yeah, I've played this with my friends before in the recordings because I wanted to play and we all had different answers. And it's always quite funny to have, well, you can click the answer, but I'm going to say that you're wrong and I think it's this. And then you either get to go, oh, you were right, or I told you so, which is always <laughs> fun, isn't it? Always fun. All right, everybody's voted. Are we ready? Let's see what people said. Most of you guys said B for more hens, the one with the red beak there. Some of you said A with the white beak for the coots. Or um, quite a few of you also said C for the grey heron flying along the water. Well, the answer is the grey heron. It's a huge, huge bird. It's crazy big compared to the coot and the moorhen. They're beautiful. And you normally see them standing still and upright in the water, shallow water, looking for fish and food, or, or with their necks all bent like that, flying away. They're beautiful. Okay, so next one. There is a splash of a fish in the water and you just see some scales through the water. Whose scales do you think these are? Is it A, a pike fish, B, an eel? or C, a brown trout. So whose fit scales do you think these are? They're really pretty, aren't they? I thought when you first showed me the picture without the options, I thought that was a picture of some big jelly eggs in the pond. And I got very <laughs> confused when you said it's the side of a fish. <laughs> <laughs> or some eyes like, woo, looking at you. I kind of That's want to put so a true. smiley face on it. <laughs> You can see all those beautiful little scales. If you look at the picture, you can see how they all connect and change and create that pattern. I think that's incredible. You don't normally get to see that up close in the fish in the wild. Oh my goodness, votes are pouring in, mostly between two options at this point. Let's see what people think. We're nearly finished. Last few votes to come in. Three, two, one. Here you go. Let's see what people said. Okay. A one or two votes for the big pike fish, which can, which can be up to a metre big. But oh, most huge. of you guys, I know, imagine seeing that swim by you, gosh. And <laughs> I'd love to see a pike. That would be insane. Um, but most of you guys said C for the brown trout. So yeah, the people in the was... chat are saying that those spots gave it away. And I think that they are very clever detectives in our team, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> Amazing. Definitely. Nothing gets past you guys. So it was, of course, that brown trout with those beautiful spots. And these guys are hunters. They're predators in rivers. And they sometimes come and jump out of water to get insects in the air and stuff. How cool is that? Gosh, that's incredible. Okay, I think we have got a couple more left, Joe. So, all right, very you quick. See this poo on the side of the path, really close to the water. It's full of fish bones, fish scales, and even frogs' legs. Oh, whose poo was this? So, who's <laughs> left this behind? Is it A, the mink, B, our otter, or C, a fox? Whose poo do you think it is? Now, you don't have to be a poo expert for this. Give it a guess. We are definitely not poo experts here. <laughs> <laughs> Although we always take the time to look. <laughs> yes, we do. Especially in our gardens. Walk, yeah, <laughs> you can't walk past an interesting poo. Didn't you just discover you've got hedgehogs in your garden thanks to hedgehog poo? 
Yes. <laughs> How excited are you? Lizzie literally shouted it across the office at me the other day. I've got hedgehogs! <laughs> I don't think I've seen you that happy for a long time. Delighted, Lizzie. Can you imagine? Very mm. excited. All right, anyway, yeah. sorry. I should, I should launch the poll. Yes, <laughs> please. <laughs> All right, so, team. <laughs> a is our American mink, B is our otter, or C, the fox. Um, but if you guys have been with us for a while, you might know I like hedgehogs. So it was a great day <laughs> when we found hedgehog poo, and I've even seen one now. So very you see, exciting. You saw <clears> one <throat> in your garden. Yeah, it went through the fence, the hole in the fence. And oh, my oh, goodness. Very exciting. I'm going to calm down now and continue with this. I was about to say, <laughs> how calm were done. you when you saw it? <laughs> Not very calm at all. <laughs> very excited. Oh, that's great news. I'm so happy for you. I know lots of our Thank wonderful you. explorers at home have been making changes to their gardens too, so that they get hedgehogs and they have ponds with loads of frogs in them and all these wonderful things. So I love that. Fantastic. Michael says he loves hedgehogs too. That's really nice. All right, everybody's voted. Let's see. These are the results. Who was it? Well, <laughs> most of you guys think Otter. We've had some answers for the American Mink and the Fox as well. But the poo belong to our Otter. Woo, woo, woo. Well done, guys. So it was the clue was the fish bones, the fish scales, and the frog's legs. That is what otters love to eat. And you know what? We used to have loads of otters, didn't we, Josie? But over time, we don't have any more in Surrey, but they do sometimes visit from other counties. So if we keep making sure our rivers are clean or we help some of them out a bit more, make sure there's more fish and more plants for fish to hide in, then yeah. hopefully one day we'll have these guys along our rivers. That will be pretty yeah. cool. Imagine it's... going for a walk and seeing an otter. <gasps> that would be special, <laughs> wouldn't it? It's so sad that our rivers got so poor and unhealthy over the last couple of hundred years that we don't have otters. We used to have otters and they just can't survive in our rivers. They're too dirty. Like Lizzie says, there's not enough fish because the water's too polluted it's not good and that's why we don't have otters now but we're working on it sorry wildlife trust battling to try and make our rivers beautiful again and we're about to watch a video that will help you know how you can help our rivers too and that's going to mean that you can help get otters back how exciting is that can you imagine having otters oh anyway so i think that's our last one isn't it lizzie um there are two more quick we'll do it really quick. yes Come on, let's we do don't it. have time it's half past lizzie we can do it we can do it go, go, go. okay whose skin do you think this is it's lying along the grass on the edge of the river it either belongs to a slow worm a a grass snake b or C, our adder, which we find on our heathlands a lot in Surrey. So who do you think this is? Is it A, the slow worm, B, the grass snake, or C, the adder? Now I will say only experts can really tell whose skin is whose. So this is a good test for you guys. It's a really tricky one. And it, I don't think I could know by looking at the skin. I would only know the answer to this by thinking about our theme today, which is a bit of a clue mm. there. It's the only chance we have. It's maybe the hardest question we've ever asked, actually. <laughs> and that shows because our, our answers, have a look at this, our answers are nearly evenly split. It's crazy. So most answers go to see the adder, followed closely by the grass snake and then the slow worm. I like a bit of a challenge for you guys. The answer was the grass snake. The grass snake is our water snake. They like to swim in our ponds, in our gardens, along rivers, and adders are found in our heathlands. They like much drier conditions. And the slow worm wasn't even a snake, it's a lizard. So when they shed their skin, it doesn't all come off at once. Like with a snake, it comes off in pieces. So mm -hmm. now you know, if you spot some skin that's in pieces, it's likely to be a lizard. Very so cool. Well. So that means that grass snakes should probably be called pond snakes or maybe river snakes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> They're, well, they're sometimes wetland, called they? water snakes. Yeah. So uh, that it. makes sense. They could be water snakes. Exactly. All right, our last one is something that has made a dam. As you're walking along the river, suddenly it becomes a big pond and you can see a dam at the front of it causing it. 
Who's made the dam? Is it A, the beaver? B, the stoat with that lovely white belly? Mm. Or C, the otter? So the poll will come up. A for beaver, B for stoat, C for otter. Have a go. Who's made that dam? Loads of votes pouring in. And at the moment, they are unanimous. Everyone's voting for the same. Oh, it's mixing up a little bit more now. That's good. We've got some more varied answers. Last chance. Everybody's voted. Fantastic. Let's go then. Let's see what you said. Most of you guys said beaver. So well done. If you've never seen a beaver before, guys, this is what they look like. They have big teeth that they can use to fell trees and they chop that up and make dams and they make the dams so that the water level rises and they can make their underground um, sort of burrows or what are they called? Um, a halt. No, halt. not a halt. Is it a halt? It's an otter. No. Yeah, no, it's a lodge. There you go. Lodge, that's Come on, it. brain, bring it back, bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have these yet in Surrey in the wild, but lots of wildlife trusts are working to bring them back because they make amazing habitats or wetland habitats for creatures like dragonflies and bats that love to catch midges over the water. So maybe one day you guys might see a beaver in the wild. How cool oh, that would be wonderful. And you know, in the comments, Michael has said, those teeth look like leaves, which is very funny <laughs> because they are leaves. And you know, a lot of people think that beavers eat fish and that's not actually true. A lot of people who look after fish and fish is their business and they like to do fishing are really worried about bringing beavers back into the wild because they think they'll eat all the fish but they don't know anything because they don't eat fish. Beavers are actually good for fish populations in rivers because they make the rivers healthier and spread the water out. So beavers only eat leaves and the bark of trees and that's what you could see sticking out of its mouth as it was stuffing all the leaves in as a happy vegetarian so now <laughs> you know a lot more than a lot of people who get very upset about beavers so hopefully we can spread the message so everyone loves them as much as we do mm -hmm. amazing well yeah. guys that was our game well done for giving the go at guessing i know some of them were a bit harder than others and some of them you just breeze through um <laughs> josie did you want to share that video? You were I want about? to share a video. It's a really special video and you guys are very lucky because we are premiering our brand new animation. It's been made especially for Surrey Wildlife Trust and it is all about our rivers. And we've got a little story being told by one of the animals that we met in our game just now. Now I've got a challenge. I want you to listen really carefully to especially the bit at the beginning, because we're going to talk a little bit more about that at the end. So let me share my screen. And I need to remember too, Lizzie, to do sound and optimizing <laughs> for video clip, because we need both now. So hopefully you can see the screen. I'm going to pull this out of the way because otherwise that's going to be a big black blob. I'm going to make it full screen. And are we ready? And have you got your sound turned up, everyone? Because there'll yeah. be sound with this. This is in the way again, isn't it? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you ready, everyone? Three, two, one. Let's go. Hello, I'm a brown trout and I'm here to tell you how we can keep my river home safe and make sure there's enough water for all of you. We all need water. In fact, 60% of your body's made up of water and your home uses 350 litres on an average day. But there's something bad happening to our rivers. With all the houses we heat, cars we drive, flights we take and food we need to grow, we are releasing huge amounts of greenhouse gases which are changing our climate. This is causing hotter, drier summers and creating heavier storms. There's not enough water in the river throughout much of the summer, but when it does rain, the storms bring floodwaters gushing into the river, which damages my home and floods your towns. Let me explain. This is the town near my river. It's a busy place and there's always plenty going on. Let's have a sneaky peek at what people are up to. Ah, 
It's important to brush your teeth, but hey, they've left the tap running the whole time, wasting all that precious water. They're off out. Oi, don't do that. That's a pretty garden being watered from the tap. <gasps> That's a lot of tap water. And that's not good. Covering our grass and plants with hard paving. Sorry, worms. These things are happening again and again in everybody's homes and gardens. And it all starts to have a big impact. Let's look at where this vital water comes from. The town gets its water from a pumping station. Did you know that much of the water we use is pumped from under the ground? It's called groundwater. Groundwater isn't just for us. It also feeds the rivers and is responsible for the majority of flow when it's not raining, especially in the summer. Rivers and their banks are so important as they form valuable corridors for plants to grow and wildlife to travel along and make their home, including some of our rarest species. The more water we use, the more stress we put on this valuable resource. If we waste water, we risk drying up our groundwater, which affects us, our rivers and our wildlife. Ah, but wait, what's this? It's a cloud and it looks like a rain cloud. This should help. Oh no. With all our hard paved surfaces, the water has nowhere to go. Flooding our homes and transporting our litter to other places, harming both land and river wildlife. And look at this poor heron with rubbish stuck on his beak. And lots of this rubbish eventually being washed out to sea. What a mess! Come on, we can do better than this, can't we? Let's go back and start this story again. Turn that tap off. Nice one. And in the recycling section. That's clever. They're now watering the garden from a newly installed water butt. This doesn't use up our tap water. It uses rainwater, which plants prefer. A win-win. They've removed some paving and are growing more plants so water can absorb back into the ground and replenish our groundwater. Wow! If we all make these small but vital changes, we'll be saving so much valuable water. Let's see how our pumping station is looking now. All the levels are looking well balanced and in check. Our groundwater is looking healthy, which means much needed water flows to our valuable rivers, lakes and ponds. They are now as they should be, brimming with so much wildlife, including some of our rarest species. So if we all act now, we can help to protect our wildlife and our own futures from the impacts of climate change. And now it's time for me to get a wriggle on. That was amazing. Did oh, you like it, everybody? I couldn't see the comments while it was going on, but I could see lots of things popping up. Lots of people enjoying that. Oh, that makes me really happy. Michael says it was great. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it as well. We're very proud, as you can imagine. So at, at the beginning of that video, there was a part where Brown Trout said that our rivers were in trouble because of something called climate change. Now you right, might remember if you were listening really carefully that brown trout said that the cars we drive, the food we need to grow to be able to eat and all of the planes we fly in and the homes that we heat, all of those things release things called greenhouse gases. And these greenhouse gases act like a blanket that is thick around the whole world and it heats up the whole planet. So those greenhouse gases cause climate change where our planet gets warmer and warmer. And it's been causing chaos all around the world. In the UK, we get really hot, dry summers where there's not enough water, just like brown trout said, the rivers dry up, we don't have enough water and there's a drought and it's really, really bad. But in the, when we do get a storm, 
there's so much rain all at once with these bigger, heavier storms that we get floods in our towns and cities and the rivers get washed away and damaged as well. So climate change is a big thing and it's on a big scale. Now you might have heard there's a big meeting going on next month where all the global leaders are coming together called COP26 and they're gonna make big plans and promises to help fix all of this together. But there's some things that we can do while they do the big stuff, we can all make changes too. If you want to know more about climate change, we did a whole session, didn't we, Lizzie? All about yes. it. And it's recorded, it's on our website, you can watch it anytime. And we explain it in a bit more detail. So if it's something that worries you, we explained it, we took loads of questions, and we made it something that you can understand and know it's not something you need to be scared of. And it's something we can all help to change and stop it from happening. And there's some ways really quickly that you can do as well. We could all eat less meat. We could walk to school or cycle to school instead of getting in the car when we can. We could all put a jumper on instead of turning up the heating in our houses. Maybe if we break something, instead of throwing it away and buying a new one, we can try and get it fixed. I've been trying to do better at that myself recently. And maybe if you get to choose a toy or choose something for yourself, try and choose something with less plastic in it. All of these things make a really big difference for climate change on a big scale, all the world. And the best thing you can do, I promise, the best thing you can do is to talk to people about it. If you tell other people that it matters to you, why it matters and that you're changing your ways to help stop climate change, it makes other people think, hmm, Maybe that's something I should do. And that is the most powerful thing you can do. It's what we do all the time. People get fed up of us telling them, but you know what? It makes a really big difference. So there's some other things, isn't there, Lizzie? There's some things we can do to help rivers, especially. And Lizzie, yes. I think, are you gonna share your screen? I am, and you'll be pleased to know no sound is needed this time. So it should be <laughs> pretty smooth. So our this week is because it is Rivers Week, and we want to help our rivers. Our challenge is what Brown Trout said. There were four actions that she talked about. And the first one was alter the taps. So making sure we save water. By saving water, we use less, and that means less gets wasted as well. So just turn your tap off when you're brushing your teeth. Maybe have a shorter shower, make it a challenge at home and see who can take the shorter shower while still cleaning, may I add as well. <laughs> you can't just go in, wet, done. <laughs> Not a um, and our adults as adults we drink lots of teas and coffees so just making uh filling up with the water that you need for your cup of coffee instead of the whole kettle and wasting lots of energy trying to heat it all up so there's lots of little things we can do mm -hmm. to save water at home and at school too that's what's really cool about it we oh my it goodness lizzie sorry to interrupt you so rudely but it is quarter two we gotta go I quick know. <laughs> i know don't you worry don't you worry <laughs> Uh, the second point she talked about was the fact that rubbish is polluting our waters and it's here in Surrey too, you might see it on walks, so our challenge is to, if you can, make sure your rubbish goes into the bin all the time or even better be recycled or composted if it's food and things so making sure our rubbish goes where it should and not into the environment and if you see any on a walk maybe you could do a litter pick with your family um wearing gloves and not picking up sharp things that's very important yeah always do help. a litter pick with an adult definitely but that's a really uh, great way to leave the environment better than you found it okay the second thing was all about those paving slabs that go down on gardens. And like um, Brown Trout said, the poor worms, they can't get up. And not only that, it causes flooding a lot more too. Whereas if we have lots of plants, like in this garden with more grass and things, they're like a sponge and they soak up that water. So we want more of that. But we know sometimes you can't take all the paving off the ground. So instead add some uh, pots or baskets and that still helps soak up some water so we don't have as bad flooding and that's always really nice you get to grow some flowers too which we know some of you guys have been doing and even fruit and veg too and lastly it was all about it's a funny word the water butts they are where they collect rainwater from our buildings it goes down the pipes and into the water butt we store it and then we use that water to water our gardens to fill up our ponds and it saves the water from being used and we reuse rainwater so that's a really great thing to do in our gardens and at school too 
So there's four things there. There was, um, what's the first one? Oh my goodness, taps. So mm -hmm. we use less water at home. The second was the rubbish, making sure we always put our rubbish in the bins, recycling bins or composting. Um, the third was to have less paving or add more uh, plant pots if you can't get rid of your paving. And the fourth was water butts. Now, some of them you might need to help with adults, of course, but that's a really great way to talk about it and to have some fun too. And if you do any of these activities, guys, we have a special map where if you fill in a form at the bottom of our page on our Surrey Wildlife Trust page, so it's uh, surreywildlifetrust.org slash rivers, you can fill in the map and you get a fish put where you've done your good deed for water, whether it's turning off the taps, putting in a water butt, putting in uh, pots for flowers, all sorts. You can have your own fish to show what you've done just like the two there already. So go and do that if you want, we'll send you the link after the session, don't you worry. Okay, so that's your challenge this week. And you might notice we've kind of mixed things up a bit. We put our challenge before something and don't worry, we haven't forgotten it. There is mm -hmm. still craft time. And the craft time this week is a bit of a messy one. It's a bit of a tasty one as well because it's quite a seasonal craft. We are gonna be making a blackberry crumble or I will be making a blackberry crumble for I dinner. will be going well done <laughs> <laughs> so just to share my screen for you so you can see what you will send you it is craft time and we will send you this sheet and maybe you guys have seen this before but it's a way to make blackberry crumble it gives you all the steps and that's what I'm going to be using today so you'll see that you need to get some blackberries and the best blackberries are the ones picked off the bushes mm -hmm. so I'll show you how to do that in a second you need some caster sugar plain flour brown sugar butter a little bit of baking powder and then you kind of mix it all together I'll show you how to do it and yeah so let's get started imagine um we'll rewind 24 hours to where I went to pick out some blackberries. This isn't me, but it's what I did. And what you want to do is you want to find a big bramble bush full of blackberries. I'm sure some of you guys have already been picking those fresh blackberries, which are appearing at the moment. Oh, oh yeah. And you want the blackberries that look like this. Oh, that's way. this in color. They're really black or dark purple. That means they're just about ripe. And the best ones to pick are the ones that come off easily. So ones that just fall off, basically. That means they are ready. If you have to really tug them off, they're likely to be quite sour. Some people like the sour, but I definitely don't. Because <laughs> they like sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you'll be picking, those dark ones there. And once you've got enough, that's how we can make our crumble. But I would always pick a few extra so you can stack on them uh, while you bake but you want to make sure you wash them when you get home and just be aware, look at that picture, they do have spikes on them. So along the stems and on the leaves, brambles have spikes to protect uh, them from like deers eating them. So just be careful as you pick, all right? Perfect. So One other thing to say while you get your stuff ready is that yeah. we recommend if you're going to pick berries with the aim to eat them, we say yeah. always go with an adult who knows exactly what you're looking for. Because if you pick some berries and you're wrong about which ones you pick, they can make you really, really sick. And some berries are even poisonous. So you've got to be super, super careful to make sure that you're with an adult who knows exactly what blackberries looks like and they can help you to pick the right ones. That's super important. Thank you, Jo, so that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. So I've got my instructions here and let's get started. I've weighed out all my ingredients and my um, oven proof dish, which is this one, is smaller than the one in the, um, in the example. So I'm gonna be halving the ingredients. So when you come Put to do Put it down this, lower, we can't see. Oh, I was just gonna move this out of the way because oh. <laughs> I'm gonna bring in something else. <laughs> so I've got the blackberries that's been collected, nice and fresh. They're in all sorts of shapes and sizes. <gasps> and I've been trying not to eat oh, them throughout this session. I want one now. <laughs> I know, it's so tasty. I'm so excited. So the first thing you want to do is get your tray, um, your bowl like this. You want to put your blackberries in there and sometimes you can add cooking apples too. So you can mm. to, uh, put less blackberries in and put an apple or two in, cut them up. And they are really tasty. If you want something more than a blackberry crumble, 
put in some cooking apples. Oh, it's delicious. I made one the other day. I made a vegan one the other day. So all you need to change for that is change the butter into just vegan spread or vegan butter. It's basically the same. And that's it's the really only easy. difference. It was it's really amazing. Good. Yeah, recommend it. That's why we wanted to do this, isn't it, Joe? So that lots of people, everyone could give this a go. As long yeah. as they're not allergic to blackberries. <laughs> well, you so, don't have to use blackberries. You can put basically any fruit in. That's true. That's true. So the first thing you want to do is put your blackberries in your tray. Like you've got a nice layer. And then you sprinkle your caster sugar, which is two tablespoons. And if you Lots don't know how to measure a tablespoon, you sometimes you have funny things like this. Where you've got a tablespoon and a teaspoon measurement, but not everyone does have that. So instead, have your tablespoon at the ready and you just fill it up with sugar like this, about that, and then sprinkle. And this will just keep it nice and sweet. Um, because sometimes they are sour. In. Yeah, yes. you want it for the apples as well. Definitely. So that's your first step. Put this to the side for a moment. I have washed them as well before. Um, before doing this and make sure you wash your hands before you do this as well at home always very important mm -hmm. so the next step it says to mix all the remaining ingredients together um, and you can do that but I was brought up on a way to make crumble a bit differently than that and that is to mix your butter which is here and your flour together using your fingertips like this so I'm going to give it a go and this makes it into sort of a bread crummy texture it takes a bit of time. It's a bit messy. This is why I love doing crumble. It's so, so nice. Keep... Do you know, I always put a little bit of cinnamon in as well, because cinnamon, <gasps> especially if you've got apples in the main bit, if you have apple and cinnamon together, it's just magical. It's one of my favourite flavour combinations. And, you know, Ooh. sometimes, Lizzie, I put a little bit of um, golden sugar on the top of the crumble at the very end as well, and it gets really chewy, crispy. Oh, I won't crumble oh, wow. now. You're making me hungry. <laughs> you have to go and blackberry pick then, Joyce. Make I will. Fun. I did the other day. I made a crumble and then I brought it to my brother's house and he ate all of it. How mean <gasps> is that? I know. I was, I was very generous. <laughs> Let us know if you guys have been making stuff with your blackberries you've been picking already, though. We always love to hear your creations. That would be amazing. So basically, you keep doing this until it looks like breadcrumbs. It's getting there. My butter was super soft, so it's um, managed to sort of break down really easily. But you just keep uh, rubbing your thumb and sort of two uh, fingers together in the mixture, and it breaks down. And the trick to find the bits that you haven't quite broken down yet is to give it a shake. <laughs> Then the big bits come up at the top and you can yours them. looks healthier than mine i had a lot more butter involved <laughs> this is quite a small portion because i've only got a small tray so there would be two times the amount if you were reading the instructions <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> listen alex yeah. amy and abigail in the chat said that they made ink from blackberries <gasps> how cool is that for an idea that's amazing can they tell us how they did it because that's I don't awesome know. i want to know more as well doesn't that sound fantastic fun imagine doing that's paintings amazing. with blackberries you picked <gasps> yes you could do it in the woods oh my gosh okay they, said so. they used it to draw a picture and write a postcard that's amazing Amazing. that is a postcard yes love it okay so that's about done uh, you can see it's all sort of uh, the butter's now not in big cubes it's broken down kind of bread crummy so then this is when I would add everything else so you've got your uh, soft brown sugar doo -doo -doo, putting that in and you've got a teaspoon of uh, baking powder which is not ready hang on one moment so I've got my baking powder I wanted to show you how to uh, get a level teaspoon. So you've got your Lizzie, teaspoon. Lizzie, we've got five minutes left. Just guess. <laughs> okay. There you go. So that's about a level teaspoon. You can see it. Pop it in. Mix it up with a spoon. You don't want to get the butter too hot with your hands. We have warm hands. Mix it like up. A cookery show with a time li limit. I need <laughs> a, a timer like boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is literally the last step, Joe. So don't worry because... <laughs> We just pour this on top. Now this is when it gets my my desk very, 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 very messy. Here we go. Mm. And then I'm gonna spread it out, cover all those blackberries or apples, whatever you put in your crumble, get them covered. And then you bake it. And it, you bake it at 180 degrees in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes so until it's golden brown. And once it's cooked, 
it will look a bit like this. This is my apple and blackberry crumble I made last night. So can you see? It got wow. your crumble or golden. I've got some fresh blackberries on top. And you can even see some apple in there as well. So that's what I'll have for dinner oh, tonight. Now I'm really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it is really dinner time for us all, isn't it? Okay, I love, so. in the chat, lots of people have been sharing their own ideas of what they'd add. I've got some suggestions. Somebody said banana crumble. I've never heard of that before. And that sounds exciting. We've got chocolate crumble ideas, loads of different things. People are going to put all different fruits, their favourite fruit in. What a lovely idea. I, if you do make one, please send us a picture. I'd love to see all your beautiful, delicious things. Make me as jealous as you can. Make it look all pretty. That would be really nice imagine it's steaming and if you had like ice cream putting ice cream next to it so it's not too hot to eat but it's still warm enough to melt a bit of ice cream move your camera we can there only we see a little <laughs> bit of your face i've got quite flowery buttery hands so i was trying not to touch my laptop oh yeah no <laughs> typing for you <laughs> so that is I think that's it, isn't it, Joe? So we've done our mm -hmm. craft. Well, so we've got we've one done. more thing, which we are not allowed to forget, Lizzie. This is why I'm like, we've got three it. minutes. Okay, go, go, go. So with our final three minutes, especially if you're new, we always try and squeeze in sound <laughs> of the week. And sound of the week is just a little game where we play you just the sound first, and then you have to guess what the sound is of. It's normally, and this week it is, an animal relating to our theme. So turn your speakers up i am going to share my sound only okay and i'm going to play you the sound that this animal makes there's a lot of background sound so i'll give you a clue so you know which one we're listening for it's the sound that sounds like a dinosaur what, <laughs> yeah, what? i thought we were talking about rivers we are <laughs> so have a listen and tell us in the chat what do you think made this noise here we go Oh my goodness, that's loud, isn't it? What do you think it sounded like? <laughs> that's my best impression. It sounded really interesting. Did you all hear it? We've got lots of ideas, people telling us different names of dinosaurs in the chat. Oh, one person's got it right. I won't say who yet. Lots of people having guesses. Keep guessing, I'll play it again. So you want the one that sounds like my very good impression. Are you ready? It's <laughs> I make myself laugh i'm sorry okay have a listen tell us what do you think it is velociraptor is a good guess it's not quite right today are we ready <laughs> they sound so mad it is in fact two people three people have got it right in the chat you're doing very well today i'm very impressed lots of answers coming in and i can tell you now and i will share my screen the answer is let me just make it nice and big the answer is a heron so let me bring it back to the beginning and then i will share my screen with I want to share which one? This one. No, that one. And I'm going to share it with sound. So are we ready? Can you all see that screen now? Good. Thank you for the nod, Lizzie. And listen up. Here it is. The heron itself having a good old squawk. Oh my goodness, what a crazy sound. Right, let's stop that share. We don't need it now. So well Let's done see. to, who was it? It was Vera got it right, Elska got it right. Oh, my computers decided to play me more heron sounds. <laughs> Beatrix got it right as well. So there's quite a yeah. few of you guys that got it. So well done, that's incredible. Maybe you've heard them before. Maybe that was an utter guess and you got it on point. So well done. I and whoever said it was I'd a velociraptor, 
kind of close. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It does sound so much like a dinosaur. It really makes you realise that birds came from dinosaurs a long time ago. So they're related. Amazing. It was a difficult one this week. So well done for all of your guesses. I need to wrap up now because we've reached our time limit. So thank you for coming. It's been so much fun. I love all of your chats, all of your questions and comments and your stories that have been shared. Now, normally we'd get to the end and we would end with a gallery where we share all the beautiful pictures you've sent in over the month. But because we were away last month and you all were very busy, clearly, on your summer holidays, we don't have enough pictures to share and put a whole thing on today. So what we'll do for the few people who did send them in, thank you so much. They are safe. I love them. I will email back anyway and we will keep them safe until next month. And then I will include your pictures from the summer in that because it really don't i do want to share your beautiful stories we just don't have time to squeeze them all in today so we will keep your gallery ready for next week if you make the crumble send us pictures if you have wildlife related adventures send us stories and pictures and we can include them all in the gallery next week we'll play them all as a beautiful video at the end to share your own stories with what you've been up to with the rest of our explorers now, other things to quickly say, if you do any of those four challenges that brown trout set you, so turning off the taps, uh, picking up paving slabs so water can go in, having a water butt so that the rain gets collected, and what was the other one, Lizzie? The rubbish, so picking, ah. making sure your rubbish goes where it should. If you do those four actions or any other actions to help stop climate change or protect our rivers, please add it to our map on the website. There's a whole link. If you just search for rivers on Surrey Wildlife Trust's website, you can add your action to the map and we would be proud to show all of our explorers are the best. Look how many of these people were explorers because we are the real army fighting climate change together. I'd love to have you all on there. Um, other things to say, our next session is the 14th of October. It is King of the Woods and I didn't give much away in the description. What we mean by that is the oak tree, of course. The King of the Woods himself is the beautiful majestic oak tree. And while you might think a whole hour session about one tree well you have no idea how amazing these trees are so you just wait we're going to show you all about the wondrous oak trees and it's a good one too because you will all see oak trees all around the UK and so you'll get to know all their secrets which will be really really fun so thank you to all of our people who've returned especially after a month's break and welcome we've loved having all of you people who haven't joined us before we hope you can join us again and make sure you join up separately sign up for each week individually because the link is different and tell your parents they need to sign up again if they didn't sign up for next week as well as this week because otherwise they won't get the email that tells them how to join so sign Just up separately to, to say it's next month um don't worry <laughs> not next week next month 14th Aww. of october <laughs> Thanks we used to for do correcting me, Lizzie. Yeah, we <laughs> did. We used to do every week, and I still say every week, but now it's every month. You can sign up for all the sessions every month until Christmas now. So we've got them all ready. You can just sign up for them all now and forget about it, and you'll get all the emails as you need them. All right, fantastic. So share, tell your friends, get everyone involved. Then you can chat to everyone at school about all the fun things we did at Explorers. And hopefully, we will see you all again soon. All right, have I forgotten anything, Lizzie? don't think so um we will send you everything you need to know guys and it was such yeah. a pleasure to have you again and thank you for turning up and getting uh participating in it all it makes our evening and we love doing this so thank you and we will hopefully see you in october yeah. King of the woods. see you soon bye everybody bye, bye.